Hello. Uh, we're revisiting the Cartesian Diver today because uh, uh, in my previous video I had a comment by Science Advisor Steve, a very nice comment, uh, which I appreciate, pointing out that uh, there is a cor more correct, a better way to uh, explain the Cartesian Diver, and uh, it, it's in terms of forces rather than density. So let me uh, try to correct my previous uh, explanation. First of all, let's look at the um, test tube that's right side up on the bottom here. I hope you can see it. And it's just sitting on the bottom and basically it sank to the bottom because the, um, the there are two forces acting on the test tube. One is the gravitational force due to the mass of the glass times the acceleration due to gravity. And the other is the uh, buoyant force, which is the mass of the water displaced by the glass in the test tube, just the glass. It displaces a mass of water, and that times the acceleration to gravity is an upward force. But since uh, the mass of the glass is greater than the mass of the water displaced, the net force is down and it sinks to the bottom. Now let's look at the a test tube here with some air in it and I'm going to make it hover. Now let's look at the combination of the glass, the test tube, glass test tube and the air and the air impinges on the test tube all right because it's inverted. The air has a mass and that mass is unchangeable. You know, if I change the volume I don't change the mass all right. So there's a downward force on the air, which is equal to the mass of the air times the acceleration due to gravity. But there's also another force, which is the buoyant force on the air bubble. And that's equal to the mass of the water displaced, which depends on the volume of the air, times the acceleration due to gravity. And that's an upward force. So there are four forces acting on the system. Two downward forces due to the mass of the air and the mass of the glass in the test tube and two upward forces due to the mass of the water displaced by the air and the mass of the water displaced by the test tube. And um, only one of them can be varied due to hydrostatic pressure because air is compressible. So when I compress this bottle, I decrease the volume of the air, I decrease the buoyant force on the air, and therefore, I can make the test tube sink to the bottom uh, by reducing that buoyant force. And if I release the pressure, it goes up. So uh, this is a, 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 an alternative and correct explanation, I believe. Uh, I look for comments, certainly. And I welcome comments. <clears throat> uh, but I hope you uh, have a better understanding uh, of the forces associated with the Cartesian diver. Thank you for your attention. And I'm going to show a little bit of a diagram before I uh, conclude the video. Okay, just to summarize, um, I got this diagram off the web without permission, but I hope no one objects. And again, I want to thank, thank a science advisor, Steve, for his uh, comments. We have the glass test tube and the glass has a certain volume and so it displaces water. We have the air bubble which has a certain volume and that displaces water. So there are four forces associated with the system, the glass air system. The glass, the mass of the glass exerts a downward gravitational force, produces a gra downward gravitational force, mass of glass times acceleration due to gravity. The mass of the air, which is unchanging. As you change the pressure, you don't affect the uh, mass of the air. The mass of the air, which is very small, but has uh, produces a downward force equal to the mass of the air times the acceleration due to gravity. We have two downward gravitational forces, and we have two buoyant forces. The glass, the amount of glass, the volume of glass, displaces a mass of water. Now that mass of water displaced is less than the mass of the glass because the air is uh, the uh, water is less dense than glass. 
but it displaces a mass of water and that produces an upward buoyant force okay due to the amount of uh, water displaced by the glass the air exerts an upward buoyant force as well because it displaces water and the mass of the water displaced times the acceleration due to gravity it produces an upward buoyant force now if we have it just hovering the four forces the two downward and two upward are balanced and uh, it, it can be it just hovers but if we squeeze it we change the volume of the air air is compressible the other the glass is not and we uh, decrease the volume of the air we therefore decrease the amount of water the mass of water displaced the volume and therefore the mass of water displaced so the upward buoyant force is reduced all the other forces are unchanged and so the test tube sinks so again i want to thank science advisor steve for his uh, insightful comments i hope this gives you a better explanation of how the cartesian diver works a more correct explanation. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you next time.